up? This is your boy Faith of Sound. We're here with another take of tap to tap to tap. Tap, tap in. Bro. Man, I'm excited today. I am chilling with the one and only Evie. 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 And we have a special guest with us this evening. Yeah. I'm Madeline, and I am really excited to be here to talk about the two things I love the most, which is Jesus and mental health. Let's go. <laughs> I'm excited about what we're about to do. Uh, and uh, I know that you're gonna get so much out of this. So, Miss Maddie, so as we heard, she's very excited to be here with us today, and we learned that she has been studying mental health for six years. So she do know her craft. She do know her craft. <laughs> she do know her craft, and she worked with children, youth, and family. And right now, she's a high school counselor. That, that's beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. a beautiful resume. Come on, give it up for Miss Madeline. Welcome to Tap In, Miss Madeline. Thank you. Um, so I have, just to jump it off, I have this question for you. Uh, what inspired you to pursue a career in mental health? And uh, what's pushing you to work at it right now? Well, I think I saw definitely at a young age, uh, my mother and also other family members just struggle with their mental health, but also they were really firm believers. And the two just kind of couldn't coincide. And there were so many pitfalls in the system. Um, with medications being like overprescribed or underprescribed and uh, lack of treatments, lack of therapy. And so I figured, hey, if you want to change the system, you got to be a part of it. So, oh, that is, so. that is beautiful. Right. So as you said, I know like within the family, especially in the church family, uh, it's not something that, you know, we encourage, you know, uh, as far as mental health. Uh, because we do believe that, you know, some people can be demon possessed, mm -hmm. but we relate every uh, 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 mental illness to demon possessed. So what would you say to the church in reference to uh, uh, associating mental health with uh, demon uh, possessed? Mm. I mean, I definitely get the association and we can say, OK, yeah, like, all right, if mental illness is not of God, then okay, maybe we can prescribe it to the enemy. Yeah. But um, I think when you're a believer, it's not that, okay, you can't ever be sick. Yeah, but we do believe in healing. So I think mental health should not be, it's got to be a part of just health and, and wellness in general, just as much as physical health, mental health is so much a part of us. So it's like, because you know, like sometimes when you're in church and they say if you feel if you're something going on is like go pray. So what would you advise to people that's in church that go into mental, you know, illness and it's just like all they're receiving is go pray God and God will heal you. Well, yeah, there's a couple of scriptures we can kind of just throw at it, right? Like, um, fix your mind on Jesus and um, you know, and he's a mind regulator. He is all that and like we can fix our mind on him, but if I'm going to sleep at night and I'm having intrusive thoughts that are not my own thoughts, like it's real like I'm not nobody's making it up you know so we have to it's kind of like my my son and daughter they um they don't like cheese but they eat pizza like <laughs> so, so I was kind of like make it make sense right? right but I think in the church we have to be like okay I am a believer and I also got some mental health challenges um like we can the two can go hand in hand yeah um I think in the line of what you were saying earlier, what are some common misconceptions about mental health that you've seen and how do you think it's best for us to address it? Mm. Misconceptions, well, definitely like, okay, maybe like we over-spiritualize, like, oh, you're not praying enough, or you're not doing this enough, or you're not believing enough, you don't have enough faith, and that's not true. What I've learned um, in the space of mental health and faith is that God is very much about the process. Yeah. Like, he is all about it. Um, he is okay with us growing, us working out our salvation, and so even in the space of mental health, like, okay, we want inner healing overnight, but no, it's like, we got to forgive our father and maybe we got to get to the root of why, um, you know, that unforgiveness was there in the first place. Like, and then, you know, we got to flow kind of through the whole story, through the whole story. And God is like really okay with that. Yeah. Okay. I kind of have a question when you said about like forgiveness, because I was listening to a sermon and the, I forgot the pastor's name, I do apologize, but he was talking about the me and he said something about how like, 
there's people we in church we doing everything you know we going to church we praying god we worshiping god we doing his service we're doing god's work but in the being of the day we still have that me that's hitting inside where it's like there's trauma or something we're dealing with you know what i mean so it's like how do we overcome the i forgive you but then i didn't forget what you did to me how do we move on for that because you know as a mm. christian you need to learn how to forgive and we need to learn how to love and i know it's hard sometimes because we're not jesus to show love to people when you know like you know this person been hurting you for so long and there's mm-hmm. maybe hatred or maybe you're still mad about it or you cannot express yourself because the moment you want to say you know what you did to me be like that's in the past you already said you're forgiving me so how do we overcome like situation like this That's a really, really good question. Um, I think we have to, yeah, I think for even forgiveness, I heard it like this on the radio one time. Forgiveness does not mean like everything you did to me and you said to me was okay, but it means like I give up my right to hold the thing that you did to me over your head for the rest of our lives. And so that thing, that chain kind of breaks off of of me and you. Um, So forgiveness, I believe, is that really conscious choice to say, okay, I... I forgive you. I can remove this offense from us, but the scars are still there. Mm. You know, um, you know, you might like I've got some scars uh, even on my ankle that I've had since a kid Um, and it doesn't hurt anymore, but I still bear the scars. And I think that's how it is sometimes in our relationships in life. Like we got hurt and we got some scars on the inside. And those those are the things we have to heal. Like even though we forgave, we got to deal with those scars like. Um, just like if you scraped your knee, we got to put on Neosporin. I don't know what you guys use when you grew up, like peroxide, maybe alcohol. <laughs> but we got to start the process of healing. And that's where God comes in. And maybe that is that looks like therapy. Maybe it looks like a support group. Um, maybe it looks like having kind of a supportive mentor or a sister or brother in, brother in Christ to kind of walk you through it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah. yeah that, that makes perfect sense. So, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. Uh, but you still got to walk through the valley of mm-hmm. the shadow of death. I think there's a misconception in the Christian, you know, belief that because we believers, we don't have struggles, mm-hmm. right? We won't have problems. And that's not a promise that's made to us, you know, in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, with that being said, how can the li- listeners prioritize self-care? Mm-hmm. Right when they are going through the darkest hours. Ooh, okay. Self care, like that's a big, um, like tag word in a right. sense this year, right. and maybe kind of the last few years, maybe since COVID, we've been hearing a lot more about like self care, self care. Um, and I really don't want that term to lose its power mm-hmm. in a sense. Um, just like the word uh, trauma, like people are like, right. oh, like we've had it just Everybody over. Has <laughs> Yeah, and the people who actually really go through trauma, um, you know, it, it, it kind of that word has lost its power a little bit. Mm. Um, and so, let's see. I would say, I'm sorry, you were. I was going to say, I was going to say, it's okay, right? So, <laughs> what I said was, cut. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. That, you're good. This happens to us all the time. It's okay, natural. good. <laughs> but we're going to keep it, though. <laughs> okay. So, so the thing is, you know, we all have problems that we go through, right? But how do we consciously, you know, go back and say, you know, I need to take care of what I need to take care of and in order for me to target this problem and find a solution for it? That's right. Okay. And that's how we get back around to self-care. Self-care. <laughs> So, yeah, so self-care is really important, and it looks different, though, for everybody, mm-hmm. right? Because your self-care, your self-care, my self-care, like, it's going to be totally so different. different. Um, maybe going to Starbucks with a friend is my self-care, and for me to just non-judgmentally tell her everything I, I want to tell her, like, and that's self-care for me. Um, or maybe it is a few minutes by myself, um, reading a book, getting in the Word, Um, taking a walk around the neighborhood like that could be self-care for you that might mean like getting a massage but sometimes people think self-care is like expensive or it takes a lot of time Mm -hmm. and that inhibits people from self-care because right like we got kids and we got to work and so we got responsibilities (laughs) responsibilities, so we don't want to 
and lose the value of self-care. But I think we just have to, I think it's maybe giving ourselves grace uh, day to day and like carving out some intentional time because there are 24 hours in the day. Like, yes, we go to work, we grind, we hustle, we do all these things and we got to cook and clean and be there for other people. But we can't forget, like, um, we never want to pour from an empty cup, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so, so self-care is, uh, is, is the best remedy. I have a follow-up question if you don't mind. <laughs> right? So, with me, it's different, right? Mm-hmm. I, I like to... It's not all the time. There are certain things I internalized, right? And I recognize that about myself. Uh, but there are things that I don't like keeping to myself, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I'll reach out to a friend. Uh, but I know a few people that internalize everything, mm-hmm. right? So, how healthy is it to internalize whatever life throws at you? Um, and how can you, you know, how can you advise that person uh, some, to do something different? Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely one who internalizes a lot of things. And so um, even now I'm kind of questioning, did I say that question? <laughs> did I respond to that one? Yes, yes, but, <laughs> but no, um, it's really, I love to say this, like it's really important the story we tell to ourselves because I am able to, Say we said, well, okay, we'll never do this and we'll never do that. And then we wind up doing the thing. Um, but I like to also use something called worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we have to flow the worst case scenario. And what is that? Um, okay, I knew a lady who had a fear of flying. And so I said, well, listen, this was really bad for this lady, though. She was mm-hmm. from Rwanda. And so everybody, she knew all of her family was international. And right. so... I said, well, well, what's wrong with flying? And she said, well, well, you know, turbulence and, and things. I said, okay, but that's normal. Like, what else? And so she said, well, you know, if the plane has turbulence, maybe the plane could go down. And I'm oh. like, okay. But then, you know, they have those parachutes and the slides and all the, the life jackets and things like that. So I'm like, well, what, what happens if the plane... Um, if the plane crashes, she said, well, well, I might die. And I said, well, that's the thing you got to you got to deal with right there. So but but what if I did die? Right. I was like, so you're not afraid of flying. You're afraid of dying. And mm-hmm. once you deal with that, like and we dealt with that. And honestly, she's been flying ever since, because when she was able to realize, like, OK, if the worst case scenario is, is I die, I said, well, what happens when you die? She said, well, I'll go and be with the Lord. I said, OK, so <laughs> it's still win win. But you have to let the fear of, of the things that you're most concerned about loses power over you. All right. Mm-hmm. So it's good to always get to the root of a thing. Let it lose its power and be careful. Of the story we tell ourselves, you know. I mean, that, that's the, I think that story can can help somebody to apply faith, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm thinking while you were talking, like about the plane, you you don't have no control of it, right? Somebody else you have to entrust your life in, yeah. right? So it, it, you could use implied faith, and sometimes we question God about the things that are happening around us, around our world, in our lives, right? And we don't trust in Him enough for Him to get you know, get us through what we are traveling through in our lives, right? And um, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, right, says, uh, you know, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, uh, plans yeah. to give you a hope in the future. And I think sometimes, like, we don't trust enough, like, mm-hmm. right? So Jesus said, if we have the faith of a mustard seed, yeah. that we could say to this mountain to move and the mountain will move. So, yeah, apply faith is what I got from your illustration of the plane. Exactly. And also, um, we got to really trust God with the ashes, you know, well, God, like, well, what if, okay, I'm really holding on to this relationship and um, I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to fail. Say somebody doesn't want to fail in a relationship. Well, worst case scenario, if the relationship does fail, well, what happens? You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we are individual and God cares about all of us. And also too, that maker is that husband. So at the end of the day, like we have to, if we relate everything back to Christ, we win in every situation. Mm-hmm. We got to not forget that he can take the most broken of situations and somehow walk us to a beautiful place, you know, and we're going to win every time. And you said something, um, when you said sometimes we have to get to the root of the problem, because I was thinking, I feel like sometimes when it comes 
especially our generation, when it comes to handling situation, we more focus on the fruit of the problem mm -hmm. instead of the roots of the problem. Say that again. <laughs> say, say it again. I said we focus, we focus on the fruits of the problem, not the roots of the problem. So instead of figuring out like what causing it, but we're more like, okay, I'm stressed. And it's, that's all we focus on. Or mm -hmm. I'm drinking alcohol. I'm an alcoholic. Or I do drugs, but not focus on what leads you for that to happen. I think that's how we go about it. So when you said something about we need to find the roots, that's what I was thinking about. Bingo. That's a good one because especially like, yeah, when people abuse substances, like also too, labeling is really important because, well, I'm not, maybe I'm not an alcoholic, but I am someone who is abusing alcohol. Like that is a difference because remember those labels can always be removed. Like mm -hmm. that is a good thing about life. So we never want to label someone, even like mental health. Well, oh, that person, you know, that's the person with the, that's, well, that's the person with the mental health disorder. That person is not just mentally ill. You know, they have a mental health disorder because all those things in life can fall away. And at the root of it, like we're still, we'll still stand and stand on our own two feet. So, yeah. yeah. So wh when do you think the turnaround happened? Because I remember being in school and I never heard of, you know, Baker Act. I never heard of mm -hmm. mental health, you know, uh, like, you know, bullying was at an all time high. Right. <laughs> it's either you deal with it or you leave the school or, you know, something else or you jo join a couple of people so you don't get bullied anymore. Right. But um, in recent years, like it, it's been high. So wh what changed? You know, that we are so aware of our mental health now more than ever. Mm, I think maybe, like, I'm just thinking about maybe a generation, maybe two generations back. I'm thinking maybe about, like, my mother and so maybe our mothers, our grandparents, our great-grandparents. Mm -hmm. They had some struggles that, in a sense, they were so much trying to overcome a lot of hurdles. Maybe it was poverty. Also, maybe it could have been um, political or racial tensions and things like that. They were really, really dealing with some big overarching situations. And I think we have come to a place of where there is some stability in our, like we have gotten education and, um, you know, we've gotten to choose the career path that we, that we love. And so I think we're just more aware because maybe we just don't have those really tough challenges that they went through. And that almost kind of sounds like I'm saying like, we're soft. And that's right. not what I, I, I was thinking about it, like, right? Because they like, call this generation the soft generation, right? And that's <laughs> all but, it's, but we don't, but you know what? It's also a blessing too, because we didn't have we to We didn't have to deal through. with what they, yeah. they dealt with, yeah. That, yeah. that makes no like that makes perfect sense so you know in that line then how important is it you know to have the support of a community because mm. we, we say this right like we have kids it's, they say it takes a village mm -hmm. and it does right a lot of moves that I want to make is because my village you know is where it's at right <laughs> so uh, we want to be around our village so how important is it to have a healthy community Oh, okay. I think that's going to answer the, your previous question. Okay. So that uh, the role of the village in our life. I think also too, us growing up, we had more like family and yes. more community and we would be outside more. But mm -hmm. now like in this generation, everybody's a little bit more to themselves, inside. a little more guarded. We're definitely inside. So now I don't, uh, I don't have to have uncomfortable conversations with somebody if I don't want to because I can block them, you know. But we used to have to go You're to family right. reunions and <laughs> I used to have to go to school with people. I didn't have a choice maybe to be homeschooled or we didn't have, you know, virtual school wasn't a thing probably like 20, 30 years ago, you know. That wasn't a thing. Um, but so now we don't have to confront those things. But the village is so important because in the village we learn um, that people had our back and we mm -hmm. learned how to handle conflict well and we really now people are definitely more isolated and we see the breakdown of the family more and more um and so yeah that village is just super important and even if we don't find it in our family system i, I really encourage our students to um at the school like hey find you a mentor like let me connect you with a mentor um you know a lot of them tell me like hey uh you know i found this youth group i'm like oh wow that is so good i'm like yes youth groups mentorship clubs and sports like because we really do need a village wherever we can find it yeah. okay so all right it's not something that's preached in church 
Uh, the first time I remember I heard about this, it was from you. Mm -hmm. And that was a year ago. Yeah. Right? Where you gave examples of spiritual characters mm -hmm. that were struggling with uh, mental uh, illnesses. Right? So do you mind sharing with the public some of those characters and what their struggles were? Okay. Um, even... Oh, this is Don't mean to put you on the spot now. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember. Oh, like a year ago. <laughs> yes, it was a year ago. Um, I'm sure it was something good, but I'm sure it was something uh, God allowed me to speak at that moment. So I'm going to try, <laughs> wanna try to see if he'll give come it back on, to spirit, me. Come on, spirit. Do your work. <laughs> come on, come on, back, Lord. Um, I'm really thinking big here, big picture with Jesus, honestly, that when it says he sweated um, drops of blood, yeah. that he was like, rock to the point of like almost death like um to me those things sound like sadness and pain and um anxiety you know and deep deep anguish and also i think about paul he said at one point that they were facing a lot of persecution yes. and he said we are like so oppressed to the point of death like um to me he was saying some things that almost sounded like a panic attack you know mm -hmm. so oh also Oh gosh. Okay, but like the when the scripture says, "Oh, God, give us the oil of joy for for mourning." Mm -hmm. Um. So so we know like there's or the sorry the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's what I'm thinking of. So like that's depression. You know, there is so the Bible is not like so elusive when it comes to mental health and struggles. Um, even Moses with insecurities and we just see it all through. And we see it all through the Bible. We see we see David who he was one he played instruments and that helped relieve like a spirit of oppression of others. So yeah, I think it's mental health is definitely it's intertwined. It's definitely intertwined. Like if we follow the thread, I think we see it all throughout all the throughout Bible. All throughout the Bible. I'm thinking about the story of Job like how depressed this man must have been, right? Yeah. Like to see everything you love, everything you own, you know, be taken away from you and, and to watch all the people you love walk away from you, that that's depressing. Mm -hmm. You know, I like, and, and you think about Job nowadays, I don't think anybody could live through what Job lived through. Right. Right. So yeah, I could definitely, once you said that and, and I started looking at, you know, the characters in the Bible a little different, and yeah, they all have some characteristics uh, about them, you know, that showed a little bit of mental, you know, illnesses and, mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, God was able to use the spirit to help them overcome. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I had a question, but I wanted to bring it back, like, into church. Because when I was saying, you know, how you work with high schoolers, so that means it was just like, there's a difference in the generation, right? Because I don't want to get it wrong, <laughs> right? The generation, your generation and our generation. So I, I wanted to bring it back, like in a church perspective, mm -hmm. how, you know, the youth in the church, how we are dealing with mental illness and the parents cannot, you know how you're saying, like they had different struggle and they cannot see it. Because, you know, like especially in our culture and it goes to if you don't pay bills, if you, like, you know, that's all you have. Like, you don't have no problem. You, that's exactly what I'm thinking about, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they always say stuff like this, which I understand a lot of people saying this generation is, so, you know, softy and we so sensitive. But I feel like everybody have their own struggle. We may not be dealing with the same thing back then or like our parents went through. Mm -hmm. And they probably, you know, like that was their generation. But then our generation is like, I feel like with our generation is things that our parents don't see. Mm -hmm. Because like we have parents that did not go to school. Yeah. And sending us to school, they are very grateful. And I am grateful for that. You know what I mean? However, the struggle of going to school, the, the, the depression that you get from studying and not passing or dealing with the professors or you feel like the insecurity you have of, like, I don't think I'll make it, or I don't think I'm that smart. They didn't go through that struggle, you know, like, we went through it, you know, and in the struggle, of now, you know, we have parents that work, and some of us have, by the grace of God, we are able to get, you know, a higher job, higher pay, mm -hmm. but it do require, you know, higher, more work for us to do. We're dealing with boss, we're dealing with different people that's jealous of us, or friends that are not being very mm -hmm. faithful, or, loyal. you know, like, it's a different struggle. It's not the same, but... They didn't experience ours. We didn't experience theirs. So how do we pull both of us together, especially in the church? Because you know they will tell you to pray. They will tell you, oh, you're not, you're not holy enough. You're not sanctified enough. You're not being that good. You're not so close to Jesus. 
that's why you're dealing with this that's why you're sad so how do you like what would you tell parents and of course the youth like when it comes to mental health how can we can bring both of us together to work on that i think that's so important and i think that takes you you know in your generation i think that takes us and our generation to really come to the table i think we all really want the same thing i think at the core we believe the same thing and like you said even though those generational shifts are different and i i hate to use that word like you guys are more sensitive or soft because your issues are still issues like yeah and trust me the issues of past generations they just often swept it under the rug. They didn't deal with it. So I think it takes more courage, actually, to deal with the things, you know, because it's still they face anxiety and depression and all kind of different challenges. But, hey, I think you guys really have a lot of courage because you are having these uncomfortable conversations and you are willing to, like, share what's on your heart and say, hey, I'm dealing with something. And so I think it's like having open forums maybe in the churches and say, hey, and you guys actually do really good about that. Just creating space for it we to try. say, um, you know, I am dealing with this and this is valid. And I think it requires um, everybody to kind of put their walls down. We have to come to the table, put all the walls down and all the prejudgments because we can't just say like, oh, yeah, you got food and you got shelter. You don't have no problems. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I have heard their generations say those things. Um, to the students um, I hear their parents and grandparents saying that well I, they have food and they have school and they got a car and so they have everything I always hear them say they have everything but I'm like there's so much more to life you know than just those physical things. things absolutely we got a whole life and calling and a purpose and dreams and hopes and yeah traumas and pains of the past like we got everything inside of us that we bear and so i think just having those open spaces and you know non-judgmentally just come together and just really talk it out i think we would have more similarities than differences yeah that's true i mean it's so hard because we say that we we don't want to be judgmental but we are yeah. we are so once somebody opens up to you um, you know, it, like to, to have the confidence that the confidence that somebody's not going to go behind your back and speak about something you speak to them in private about. And I mean, it takes a lot of courage, you know, for somebody to open up in the first place. But uh, to betray that person's trust, uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe, is detrimental to, you know, their well-being, even their mental health. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, to me is that. I've seen people struggle a lot with their mental health to where it affects every area of their lives, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we're talking about physical uh, relationships, uh, work. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to somebody that's struggling but not aware of the destruction that they are uh, setting along the way? Mm. Well, that's hard because, I mean, you want to be able to lovingly confront and, it's, right. and even the word confrontation mm -hmm. is already perceived as a negative thing um but we do want to confront the issue at hand and just go in like super supportive and say hey i'm noticing this um but I, and i always think like too i never want to judge anybody by their behavior mm -hmm. but like i would love to know like their heart you know i want to mm -hmm. know the heart behind it and you can say like hey i can see this this and this and you're dealing with this but hey like why don't we you know, if you feel comfortable sharing your heart or how can I best support you? I think it's just honestly asking the questions because I always believe everybody knows exactly what they need, but um, sometimes they just kind of don't know how to get there, you know? So I never actually try to tell anybody any kind of advice. I just kind of lead them along their process because everybody kind of knows what they've been through and what they need. And so, yeah. Okay, so it's going to be hard for me to ask the next question then, you know, <laughs> since you said that, because I was going to say, uh, what advice do you have for the, <laughs> the listeners? None. No, just kidding. <laughs> Today I'll break Figure it Figure it out yourself, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, what message of hope and encouragement can you give to the listeners in reference to their mental health? Mm. It's cliche, but I'm going to say it. Mental health matters. It matters because you matter, because you matter to God. And God cares about every single detail. If he knows how many hairs on our head, like, 
I mean, just how much more, <laughs> how much more I have um, had people actually encourage me or, or pray for me. It's like, oh, is there like, like a word of knowledge? Like, hey, is there pain in your hands? And, and I was like, I didn't tell them that. And I'm like, wow. But the fact that God would even reveal that, like if he cares about the little things, like how much more does he care about how we feel? It says he collects our tears, right? Yes. Like he collects every tear and he's concerned about our pain. And so definitely don't suffer alone. There's so much support and there's people there who want to see you get what you need. So, yeah, it's okay to speak up. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, do you have like a book or a website, you know, with somebody that's dealing with some issues can, you know, quickly grab and uh, get a read in, you know, mm -hmm. maybe that's uh, in the Christian line or, or not. Right? Okay. Do you have anything like that? I really um, have found this really great resource in the last few years, and it's called Therapies. Shout out to Jackie and her husband, Elias. Shout out Jackie. <laughs> no, she's, and Elias. <laughs> she's an amazing um, Christian therapist, and her husband mm -hmm. also. But she's been doing something recently, like they've got books on overcoming certain addictions and nice. uh, self care, and also free. Um, manuals on like how to decrease anxiety like mm -hmm. in the moment there's something called like a, a butterfly hug there's all these really cool techniques there's deep breathing relaxing techniques and she puts those resources on the website for free so it's therapies.com i would definitely check that out um and definitely look at your local agencies and um NAMI is a really great resource, the National Alliance of Mental Illness. They're always, I actually just did a walk with them, a 5K on Saturday. Super nice. hot. But, <laughs> Extremely but, hot. It was hot extremely, on um, But what, they did such a good job of bringing together every single um, helpful resource in our community all together on one stage in one space to support our community. So, yeah, like definitely check there as well. Nice. Got anything you need? You good? <laughs> well, Miss Jones, uh, Miss Madeline, Maddie. No, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Can I say one more? Can I say one more? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Go also, ahead. this is really great resource. Just like nine one one, they made it so easy. It's nine eight eight, right? That is the crisis and suicide helpline, and not just suicide because we get upset. We get a yes. little ah with that word, but no, even just any kind of mental health crisis. If you feel like you're going through in that moment and you can't call up a friend at two o'clock in the morning, you can call or text that number, and it may take you a little bit, but somebody will be on the other side of that call and they will listen to you and help you and walk you through it and help you navigate those resources so 988 you know what we mentioned 988 on here a whole lot nice. <laughs> so, okay. so go ahead and dial 988 uh maddie it was a pleasure to have yes. you on tap in Thank um, you. the information that you provided i'm sure is going to help somebody uh that's going mm -hmm. through it right now um, you're not alone. We say this on here a lot. Uh, we are all struggling. Uh, we just need to tap into our source, which is Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, he gave us all the tools necessary, you know, for us to overcome. And it's good to tap into the resources that's provided to us. Uh, one thing that I can't stand is when people say, you know, avoid the doctors, just pray. No, God gave the doctors the knowledge, you know, that they have in order for us to have that resource. So do listen to your doctor as you pray and listen to your mental health specialist as you pray. Uh, if you have struggles in your marriage, find a marriage counselor. You know, uh, it's good to have that outside person give you a different view, a different perspective uh, and help you, you know, maintain that marriage and grow your faith as well. If the person is faith based, it's even better. Uh, but even without, they can help you in your marriage because we all, whether you are Christian or not, mm -hmm. we all have struggles in our marriage. Yep. Um, and I can't even imagine, you do have kids as well and, and, and you are uh, a married woman, mm -hmm. right? And how do you balance work and marriage life? Uh, real Ooh. quick before we go out. Oh, um, I'm gonna be honest, he's amazing. Like, nice. <laughs> shout out to Jerry, he's awesome. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thank God for him because, um, 
it wasn't always amazing, but but we've grown. Like I said again, like God has walked us through the process, and He just we've just both been very attentive um, to the needs of each other as we flow through the different seasons. Because remember, like on marriage, like, the person you married, like okay, silly example, maybe they like sushi, but it's ten years down the line, they don't like it anymore. But you say like, but no, you always like that. Well, no, or maybe I used to love it when you bought me flowers, but now. I want jewelry. I don't know. Maybe I want coach. And I right. <laughs> coach back. But you got to flow with the person in the different seasons of life. Maybe they were really passionate about something and now things are changed. Or maybe they feel different about their body after they've had kids. Or, you know, maybe they've lost some parents. Maybe things have happened. So it's good. You got to keep flowing with each other all throughout the seasons of life and keep on loving and supporting each other for what you need in that season. I'm a big, I'm really big on seasons of life. And so I got it. Like you just always got to be ready when the season changes. You You know what? We need to have Madeline back (laughs) for a marriage session. Like that little (laughs) clip right there helped me a whole lot. (laughs) So thank you again, Madeline. Um, You're always welcome. Thank you so much for answering yes to our call. Uh, Miss Madeline Jones, y'all. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So check us out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, to our, subscribe to our channel. Okay. <laughs> subscribe. Sure. Uh, comments down below. Uh, I'll try to get it to Miss Madeline. If you have a question directly to her, I'll try to get it to her so you could get a response. Uh, reach out to your local mental health specialist. And until next time, tap, 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 tap in. Let's go.